Hey there, this is Math 8, Unit 5, Lesson 18, Scaling Two Dimensions. So it says, there are many cylinders for which the height and radius are the same value. Let C represent the height and radius of a cylinder, and V represent the volume of a cylinder. So they want you to write an equation that expresses the relationship between the volume, height, and radius of the cylinder using C and V. So read that again. The C part is going to be height and radius, and the V is the volume. So write an equation that works for that there. And then number two is that the V value of C is halved. That means it's what? It is one half. What happens to the value of the volume V? So think about those two there. That's kind of your warm up or your cool down from the lesson today. So those, those two you're on your own for. But just look what it is. We're just using a regular formula. Volume equals um, pi r squared h. And what are we saying? We're saying the radius and the height are going to be combined to become a C. All right? And the V is the V. So plug those things in and see what happens to one or the other. Because when you change two things, it's going to change a whole lot. But moving on. Number three. Michael has a cylindrical barrel in the pasture to keep water for his horse. The barrel is four feet tall with a diameter of two feet. What's the volume of the barrel? So what do we have? We have a barrel here. And we have a, a height of some sort. We know that the height is, sorry, uh, yeah, oh, four feet tall. So it's four feet tall as a height. We know the diameter is two, which makes the radius simply one. All right, so the radius equals one, the height equals four. Our formula is volume equals pi r squared h. So we're going to plug those things in. We have pi times 1 squared times 4. So this becomes simply 1 times 4, which is 4 pi. Now, could we figure it out 4 times 3.14? Sure you can, or you leave it in terms of pi. So we'll say 4 pi, and in our case it's feet cubed, because that's what the volume is going to be. For number 4, says the volume of the cone is 125 pi, in terms of pi, centimeters cubed. Determine the height. All right. Well, it gave us a diameter of 10, which means the radius is half of that. So the radius is 5. So coming back to our formula, volume equals 1 third pi r squared h. The volume was 125 pi. That equals 1 third pi times 5 squared times h. Another way of writing it would be 125 pi equals 1 third pi 25 times h. Now, I can start canceling some things out. Pi divided by pi is no pi. <laughs> 25 divided by 125 leaves us with 4 equals 1 third h. This is divided by 25 divided by 25. Now to get the h by itself, I multiply both sides by 3. So this cancels out. 3 times 4 is 12, and 12 equals h. So that's what I end up getting for the height of my, oops, sorry, I got a hairy there. 20, 125 divided by 5 is, by 25 is actually 5, so sorry. So we actually have 15, sorry about that. Don't get in a hurry too much. 125 divided by 25 is 5, and then 3 times 5 is 15. So we would say 15, yay. Okay, systems of equations, 5, 6, and 7 once again. We've done lots of these here the last few days. So let's substitute some stuff in. We're going to put the x minus 1 in that spot right there and solve for x. So we have 2x minus 6 times x minus 1 equals minus 2. So we'll distribute the negative 6. Negative 6 times x is negative 6. Negative 6 times negative 1 is positive 6 equals negative 2. We'll subtract 6, subtract 6. Over here, we have a negative 8 altogether. Because the signs are the same, we find the sum. Keep the sign the same. 2 minus 6 is negative 4x. We're going to divide both sides by negative 4. So that x equals negative 8 divided by negative 4 is a positive 2. We plug that back into our equation. y equals 2 minus 1. And so y equals 1. And so our solution becomes 2 comma 1 just like so. All right. 
Number seven, same idea. We take this value and plug it in right there. Right, and so we have negative x minus three times three x minus 11 minus seven. So we keep the minus x there. Negative three times three x is a negative nine x, and negative three times negative 11 is a positive 33, and that equals minus seven. So what are we gonna do from here? We're gonna combine like terms and continue on our merry way, right? So negative 33, we're gonna subtract 33, sorry. So we have a negative 40 over here. Negative x and negative 9x make a negative 10x. Divide both sides by negative 10, and x equals four. So to solve for the y value, we can do y equals three times four minus 11. Three times four is 12 minus 11. 12 minus 11 is one. So our values are four comma one, and there's a solution there. So that's six and seven. I'll leave you with five on your own. Hope that helps out a little bit, and we'll see you next time.